What is going on with the world economy? I've shown this chart a million times. This is base currency in the United States going all the way back to January of 1918. And it took all of those years to print about eight and 850, 860 billion dollars. So basically that's 0 0.85 trillion, 0 0.85. This little tiny blip right here, that's Alan Greenspan's response to the Y2K bug. This little blip right here is Alan Greenspan's response to 9-11, September of 2001, 9-11. And then this is Ben Bernanke's response to the global financial crisis with QE1, QE2, and QE3 peaking at about $4.1 trillion. Uh, now I'm going to zoom up on this a little bit so that it matches up a little bit better with the next chart I'm going to show you. So there's QE1, QE2, QE3 topping out at about $4.1 trillion. The next chart is the same chart of base currency, but I've overlaid currency in circulation. So there's the, the Y2K bug and 9-11. Uh, and these are recession bars. The gray bars here are U.S. recessions. And so this is currency in circulation. And the area between these is called excess reserves. And this is the reserves that the commercial banks have in their accounts at the Federal Reserve. And it's used for end-of-day settlement and intrabank lending. They lend to each other at the federal funds rate each day to pretend that they're not insolvent. They would be if they didn't have these excess reserves. A lot of the banks would actually have to file for bankruptcy at the end of every day. <laughs> Here, we have the excess reserves that the banks used, were able to use. This is all they needed before the global financial crisis for that end-of-day settlement. And, you know, this, this was a very, very narrow spread going way, way back. They just didn't need very much excess reserves. So that's excess reserves. If we go to a chart of excess reserves, this is that spread in there, that extra territory, and it peaked out at about $2.7 trillion of excess reserves from almost nothing. You know, from about $1.5 billion to $2.7 trillion. And, uh, you know, they're doing the quantitative tightening, and this is shrinking. But notice that uh, it's at much lower levels now on the excess reserves than it was in 2012. But if we go back to base currency, base currency is much higher than in 2012. And notice that these steps here are level, pretty much. When you go over to excess reserves, these steps are very slanted. That's that currency leaking out into circulation. It's, it's this uh, brick-colored line, the red line, taking excess reserves away from base currency. So, going on to the next chart, this is total assets. Now, when the Federal Reserve acquires an asset, they do so by creating currency. They counterfeit a dollar into existence, and then they buy something with it. And what's interesting here is that this is at $4.5 trillion, not $4.1. So there's $400 billion that, that isn't accounted for in base currency. But notice this little uptick on the end. This is increasing again. Federal Reserve assets are once again increasing. So they're creating currency, and it's not showing up in base, in base currency. So where is that? This is repurchase agreements, which they used to do on a regular basis. Most of these are overnight repos. Some of them are longer. But repurchase agreements are usually overnight loans that the Federal Reserve makes The the bank promises to repurchase the asset that they're loaning to the Federal Reserve and getting a loan against the, the collateral, they promise to repurchase it the next day. So these are repurchase agreements, and this is the response to 2008, and this is where Ben Bernanke says, oh, the hell with it, we're not going to do repurchase agreements anymore. We're just going to print currency, and that's when he started all of the QEs. But look at what has happened here. We're up at close to a quarter of a trillion dollars of repurchase agreements. This is $215 billion that has been created in just the past few months here. 
and you know they're getting rolled over some of them might be longer term because this gets this just is growing it's not like chopping up and down like these were and now i want to move on a little bit more back to uh, base currency and i'm showing you this going back to 1950 because i want to match it up with the next chart so we're at 855 billion 860 billion so 0 0.85 trillion and then that went up almost fivefold to 4.2 trillion. I just want to show you that we're not the only ones that are crazy. We stopped our currency creation back in 2014. But look at what the Swiss National Bank has done. Now the Swiss franc is the stalwart of fiat currencies that's supposed to be the most reliable, solid of all of the fiat currencies out there. This chart goes back to 1950. This is their response to the global financial crisis and then their versions of QEs. And what you see here is that they didn't stop printing until mid-2017. What is going on with the world economy? Now, to give you a, a sense of the scale of the Swiss National Bank's currency creation, this is their currency creation compared with the U.S. Federal Reserve's currency creation. So this is all the currency that Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen created, and then the Swiss National Bank. So we created about five times the original amount of currency. They've created 12. 12 times. What I've done here is I've taken uh, their currency supply and our base currency supply, and I've indexed them to 100 uh, at the beginning of that, the last great recession. And so this is the growth factor since the beginning of the last great recession expressed in a percentage of growth factor basically this is times one times two times three for the federal reserve times four times five basically but for the swiss national bank they're up at times 12. now another thing that i want to point out you know these gray bars are the recession bars and the federal reserve has recession indicators and a recession is a lagging indicator. It requires two consecutive quarters of economic contraction to be called a recession. And the Fed has to compile that data, and it takes them a few months. So you don't find out until we're eight months, nine months, even a year into a recession before the Fed goes, oh, a recession started nine months ago. And we're still in it, uh, we think. We're not sure. We've still got to measure. But uh, uh, what's interesting here is you know they've got more information than just measuring this lagging indicator if you notice here they started cutting just a little bit in December of 2000 and then one you know so that's uh, one month two months three months four months before the start of the onset of the 2001 recession they started cutting rates and then we go out to 2007 here and we've got uh, uh, one month of cuts, two months, three months, four months, five months before the onset of the next big recession. In the glo and this is the global financial crisis and Lehman Brothers happening right here, the stock market crash of 08. And then they raised rates, but one month, two months of rate cuts. What is up with the world economy? You better get ready. I'm Mike Maloney. If you got anything from this video, please like it, share it, give it that uh, thumbs up, subscribe, click that little notification bell so you get our next videos. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. GoldSilver.com Price match guarantee Free shipping Global storage options Phenomenal customer service Get the best-selling book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, for free at goldsilver.com.